Welcome back to our biology videos for Form 4 and Form 5. Let's continue to study the structure of the plasma membrane. This video is a continuation of the previous one on the structure of the plasma membrane. We have already discussed the fluid mosaic model and also the structure and characteristics of the phospholipid bilayer. In this video, we will be studying the other three components of the plasma membrane, namely the protein molecules, glycolipids and glycoproteins, and also cholesterol. In the previous video, we discussed the structure of the plasma membrane according to the fluid mosaic model. And we also discussed the structure of the phospholipid molecule and its characteristics, and also the structure and characteristics of the phospholipid bilayer. So next, we are going to discuss the three other components of the plasma membrane namely the protein molecules. Two examples of the protein molecules are the channel protein and the carrier protein. Also, we are going to learn about the molecules with carbohydrate chains, such as the glycoproteins and the glycolipids. Lastly, we will also discuss the molecule called cholesterol. In the last video, we discussed about the phospholipid bilayer. The function was not stated, so here it is. The phospholipid bilayer acts as a barrier to separate the contents of the cell from the external environment. It also allows the diffusion of oxygen through it into the cell. So other than phospholipid bilayer, we have the protein molecules, glycoproteins and glycolipids and cholesterol to discuss. Let's go on to the protein molecules. We have finished studying the first component of the plasma membrane, which is the phospholipid molecule. The second component of the plasma membrane are the protein molecules. So there are two types of protein molecules that we are going to study. Firstly, the channel proteins and secondly, the carrier proteins. Channel proteins are protein molecules with channels or canals or pores in them for the ions to pass through into the cytoplasm. It's for the passage of ions. Referring to the picture A, this is the pore, which forms a straight long tunnel into the cell, from the outside into the cell. So when you are asked to identify the channel proteins, Please look out for this long straight tunnel. The shape of the protein may change or vary with uh, different questions, but the pore should always be there. The straight tunnel should be there. And that is the feature of the channel proteins. So the pore allows the ions to pass through them from the external environment into the cytoplasm. Next, we have the second type of protein molecule called the carrier proteins. Carrier proteins sound like channel proteins, but they are different. So please do not confuse the two types of proteins. Carrier proteins are protein molecules that act as carriers to carry large molecules like glucose into the cell. And they can change shape to allow the molecules to pass through the plasma membrane. So first of all, the molecule, like glucose, will bind to the carrier protein. Next, the carrier protein changes shape to allow the glucose molecule to move into the cell, as seen in the second diagram. 
of the carrier protein in B. Finally, the O term for channel protein is pore protein as used in the O syllabus. For those who are studying the O syllabus from five students, this word channel protein is actually pore protein. This animation shows you the two protein molecules in action to transport substances through the plasma membrane into the cell. Firstly, for the channel protein which has a pore, it usually transports ions such as calcium ions. The ion will move to the pore and travel down the channel into the cell. Secondly, the carrier protein. The carrier protein helps to transport bigger molecules like glucose and amino acids across the plasma membrane into the cell. Firstly, the glucose will bind to the site on the carrier protein and then the carrier protein will change shape and allow the glucose molecule to move into the cell. So these two proteins are involved in transport. The channel protein uses its channel or canal or pore to transport ions and the carrier protein uses its ability to change shape to transport the glucose molecules and the amino acids into the cell. The third component of the plasma membrane are the glycoproteins and the glycolipids. What is a glycoprotein? It is actually a protein molecule which has a carbohydrate chain attached to it. The word glyco actually means sugar. So in the picture A on the right hand side, we can see the carbohydrate chain above the protein molecule and the carbohydrate chain is floating above the surface of the phospholipid bilayer, whereas the protein molecule below is usually embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. So the protein and the carbohydrate chain together forms the glycoprotein. Secondly, there is also the glycolipid. A glycolipid is a lipid which has a carbohydrate chain attached to it. So looking at B, picture B, we can see that there's a carbohydrate chain attached to a lipid. Actually, this is the phospholipid. So the lipid and the carbohydrate chain together forms the glycolipid. Next, what is the function of glycolipids and glycoproteins? Actually, they have a few functions and these are the three important ones. The first function is that these substances bind to hormones and they function as receptors to hormones such as insulin to allow these hormones to enter the cell to trigger chemical reactions in the cells. So these receptors are only found on certain cells. These glycoproteins and glycolipids are only found on certain cells like the cells of the liver to allow the insulin to bind to them so that they can enter the cells and carry out the chemical reactions. So the first function is that they bind to hormones and act as receptors to receive the hormones into the cells. Secondly, they help to stabilize the plasma membrane structure by forming hydrogen bonds with the mole water molecules around them in the environment. And thirdly, they function as antigens, which is a type of chemical substance, to help cells within the body recognize one another so that they do not attack one another or damage one another. And this is for the purpose of cell identification within the body. Let's look at this picture and try to label the parts, as you may be asked to do so in the exam. 
What is the name of the red molecule shown here? Yes, it is a protein molecule. And there's a structure that is attached to it, above it, which is colored orange. What is that? Yes, it's the carbohydrate chain that's attached to the protein. So what do you call this whole structure? The carbohydrate chain plus protein is called the glycoprotein, which consists of protein plus carbohydrate. Going on to the next structure, the purple molecule here, what is the name for it? It's a lipid molecule, the phospholipid molecule. What is the name of the structure above it that's attached to it? Carbohydrate chain. Therefore, you are asked to label the whole structure shown here in the box. What do you call that? Glycolipid. So glycolipid is actually lipid plus carbohydrate. The fourth and final component of the plasma membrane that we are going to study is cholesterol. Normally, we regard cholesterol as a harmful substance that causes heart problems. But we find here that cholesterol is very important to our body because it helps build the plasma membrane. The cholesterol molecules are found inserted in between the phospholipid molecules. The functions of the cholesterol are quite important. Firstly, it makes the phospholipid bilayer more flexible, more elastic and flexible. Secondly, it strengthens the phospholipid bilayer. And thirdly, it makes the plasma membrane less permeable to ions and water-soluble molecules because cholesterol has hydrophobic regions in them, which will help to repel these water-soluble molecules. We have finished studying the four main components in the plasma membrane and that is the phospholipid molecules, the protein molecules, the glycolipids, the glycoproteins and the cholesterol in the plasma membrane. We must be able to identify these structures in a diagram that's given, be able to spell the terms, their names and also be able to state the functions and structure of the various components of the plasma membrane. Lastly, here's a new mnemonic or memory aid to help you remember the four components of the plasma membrane, which we have just studied. This mnemonic may come in handy, especially if you are asked to answer an essay question on the structure of the plasma membrane. Or you may have to identify the components of the plasma membrane and state their functions for structured questions. So let's have a look at this mnemonic. Poly chose to go pro. P in poly, what is it for? Phospholipid molecules. C, H, O, what is the component that is represented by this cholesterol. G is for glycoprotein and glycolipid and the other P is for protein molecules. So here we have the four components of the plasma membrane. So again, if you want to use this mnemonic, you have to practice memorizing it for a while. And then it will be very automatic for you to remember all the components after that. So we have finished studying the structure of the plasma membrane according to the fluid mosaic model. And we also studied the four components of the plasma membrane. For the next lesson, we will be studying the characteristics of substances that can move across the plasma membrane. 
So this topic is quite challenging for some students. So stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching. Remember to practice the mnemonic and also view the video as many times as you like. Thank you.